What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, check it out. The custom Disney virtual pinball machine with a super unique back box. All right guys, so I'm gonna say in all my videos for now on, so just get ready for the regular usual Instagram plug. If you guys have not followed me, be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP because you would have seen everything with this ground up build. I used my new personal CNC machine to cut everything on this. Just the side panels to get started. I didn't do like the buttons with the CNC because still learning it, but I do love how this came out. This is awesome, exactly what I wanted, the exact reason why I bought the CNC because I need all 10 of my fingers and I'm not that great with wood cutting and saws and all that, but I'm pretty damn surprised on how good that machine cut this out. So again, be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. Also be sure to like and subscribe. I will do the normal YouTube plug. Um, again, you would have seen ground up builds from cutting, from putting it together to wiring, to artwork application. Everything was posted on Instagram and now I'll be using a lot more of the YouTube shorts I don't want to overflow like your feed and all that of shorts I'll try it out if I see that it's too crazy Then I'll kind of tone it down because I don't want you guys to be upset and say oh shit This guy keeps posting stuff that I don't care about so again be sure to follow me on Instagram So this one is awesome. You guys know him. I give him he's considered family to me This is going out to George out in Massapequa if you've seen my videos, I'm talking like two or three years ago, George is really like the first customer I would, I would say I had. And uh, he was the first one ever to really contact me because he needed help getting his micro center bar top running. That went into modding his arcade one up. That went into him buying a mini NES killer. And then that went to him buying out a virtual pinball machine. He's a great dude. He's an awesome dude. The family is always great, especially when I come by, they get all ecstatic and all that. He also got one of the ultimate handhelds that was recently about a month ago. And now look, he's got a V-pin now. So it, again, big kudos to George. Again, it went from a customer to literally family. He sends me Christmas cards. It's insane. The dude's amazing. And I do give him a big shout out because he was the first one that I would say really kind of believed in me and supported me on it. So again, this is going out to George. I'm super excited because his is just unique as hell. I mean, this is insane. I'm gonna go through everything. I guarantee you've never seen a back box design ever. It's in my mind, he, did, he just said, Vic, go be creative with it. And I sure hope I delivered. He's been seeing like the little snippets and the gram stuff and he's going nuts. This is going out to him tomorrow. So I'll be delivering it tomorrow. Let's go over some basic details on this pin. So this right now is my fourth V pin. Yes, this is my fourth V-pin going out. Now that I kind of got a groove on it, and you guys saw like my Simpsons pin um, that I did for Jared, awesome dude also. Um, I've kind of gotten a good groove as far as making V-pins. Um, if you really think of it, I'm not gonna say it because I don't want like to be held accountable, but I would say, honestly, this took me about two months to build out. Now that I really am in the groove of it, I could probably shorten the time because now I know what to order and like in one shot. This one was very unique. This, this build, again, we're going to go really in depth with it to kind of go over it. Um, only kind of thing that kind of set me back was honestly the DMD setup. Uh, and again, I'll go deep into it. But first, let's start with basics. Let's go over details on this pin. So I've always done it. This is my fourth V pin and this is the fourth almost same duplicate. It is a 50 inch 4K Samsung display. I got a 32 inch back glass and this one a little bit unique. I got a 17 inch DMD display. I'll explain why I have that because George hit me with one kind of restraint or request I should say. He goes, Vic, he just did like his whole attic kind of thing and it's not really an attic anymore. It's just a whole big game room. Like it's insane. Uh, I saw it when he was under construction and now he finished it and he goes, Vic, I want a V-pin for it. The only thing is the ceiling in the attic space, it's kind of slanted. So you only really have about six feet. I said, okay, my pin downstairs, like my personal pin, as you can see, like me standing next to it, it's a little bit taller, maybe about four or five inches taller than six feet, give or take, let's say six and a half feet tall. Um, so he hit me with that one. And I said, no, it's fine. I got the CNC. Let me try out all the G code and all that. And sure enough, 
it worked. Little stuff that you could possibly notice that I had to make it work, but all in all, I am right now, I am an, an eighth? Yeah, I'm an eighth, no, a quarter. No, it's an eighth. I am an eighth of an inch under six feet. That's like precision right there. So that was like the one constraint to it. With that constraint, I had to give him a smaller DMD screen. Again, like you saw in Jared Simpson's pinball build, I did a 32 inch, uh, I always do 32 inch back glass. I just feel like that's just a very appropriate size back glass. And then the DMD, you could always modify. The DMD on Jared's was a 20 inch. On um, my personal Simpsons pin, it's a 22 inch. And then on this one is a 17 inch. Again, going small on the DMD, it's not too noticeable. Even with a 17 inch, it's a pretty, it's still a pretty big DMD. Um, definitely legible, definitely noticeable. It still works. I really, I mean, I would kind of contest going to like a 15 inch, but 15 inch is only about what? An inch in, down. So it might not be too killer, but yes. That is why I had to go with a 17 inch DMD on this one because of the height constraint on the back box. Now talking about the back box real quick, you could see on the side here compared to my pin and Jared's pin, you could see the drop right here on it. So for me to drop the, the back box down, I, I obviously had to drop it down. I have the same exact measurements for the side panels as all my other pins, but I had to drop it down to keep the height on it. With that, you could, you could see this one minor flaw. I think you could see it in the camera. When I was doing the artwork, I didn't take into consideration the drop of the back box. So I do have the beast's head kind of cut off a little bit. Or I should say it's just cut off. But that was like the one little downside I forgot to keep in mind that I had to drop the back box on it. I should have adjusted the artwork. But that's honestly the only negative I could talk about myself, my mistake on that. But luckily, I think it just came out, it came out amazing altogether. Figured I'd move the camera over a little bit because you could then see what I just noted to you. On this side though, I did Genie on this side. I'm going to bring you around. It was like perfect. Um, I, I wish I used the same heights and all that, but Genie on this side, there's no, there's nothing wrong with the artwork on this side. It's just again, Beast and uh, Belle, I believe is that Disney Princess. Just got a little cut off. It's something too big. Not a big deal. So we'll talk about the artwork because I'm talking about the artwork right now. Jordan and his family are big Disney fans. I mean, if you talk you want Disney? Like, he, he's Walt. I would just say that. The dude always posts on Facebook when he sells houses and he always uses, like, a Walt Disney quote. He's Walt to me. Like, that dude is Disney. Um, so they always go to Disney. He's a big, huge Disney fanatic. It's, it's, it's almost, um, it, it's an addiction for them, I, I guess. But not in a bad way. He's just a huge fan of Disney. So he really messaged me when I was building Jared's pin. And he and I should have remembered, uh, you know, when I did my first personal pin, he messaged me. He's like, Vic, I want to be the first one to get the next pin. I totally forgot. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, so he saw Jared's pin go out. He goes, Vic, where's my pin at? I said, Okay, bro, I'm sorry. I got you. He said, Vic, I need this thing before Christmas. So I started the work. Uh, I would say mid October was when I started like the G coding for the CNC. And now it's what, December 17. So I'm delivering it tomorrow, just in time for Christmas. So I'm excited to get that. So again, he's a very big Disney fanatic. And George is the type of dude, he goes, Vic, I trust you, go. Like, just do it, go. I, you don't even have to ask for my approval, just go. And then I said, you know what? We gotta make a Disney themed cabinet. So went all out, got a bunch of Disney characters. I made the custom Disney virtual pinball logo, kind of like the Disney Channel logo went all out with it and then he approved the artwork he goes Vic you don't have to even show it to me I approve it I approve it so again you're not going to see many Disney tables there's like one or two but it's like future pinball tables which I'm personally not a fan of but some people be like Vic there's no Disney tables why did you make a Disney pin again keep in mind customers asked me he put my trust he put his trust in me and I knew that it was a Disney fan I said we got to do Disney and again, people put these in rooms dedicated. So I haven't seen his attic yet, but I would imagine it's Disneyed out. Almost like I did that Michael Jordan arcade, uh, arcade upright. Um, he put, that guy put it in a Jordan themed room. It was like Jordan memorabilia all over it. What a coincidence we're talking about Jordan and Jordan pops up on the screen. Um, but yes, as far as artwork, totally custom Disney themed out. Even the back box, I kept the theme going with the Disney virtual pinball logo. And I just went all out with Disney characters, the main Disney characters and all that. Kind of did one side with like classics and then the other side with like modern stuff, but then I mixed it up. So like on this side, I got Finding Nemo and I got um, Frozen characters all out. I mean, I'm, 
I have a newborn now, so I have to get used to the Disney stuff, but I think I hit every main Disney character on it. <laughs> he even was looking at the artwork and he's like, Vic, you forgot Hercules. And then sure enough, it's on this side. I'll bring you around. I, I got Hercules on this. So as you see on that side, you can see the other one. So while I was talking about the backlash, the biggest thing was that, you know, I do like this whole theme that I'm going with, with the um, figurines. Um, I, it's the, the toppers. I, I like them. It's cool. It just goes with the theme. So first thing off the bat, when I was working the back box, I said there's two main things that stick up high. And that is the beacons and that is the figurines. So like my Simpsons pin, I have Homer and Bart. They're actually piggy banks. So I was like, you know, for me to do a really nice Disney table, I'm gonna need Mickey and Minnie. Um, and I was like, darn, we are constrained though with the ceiling height. My regular pin, like the Simpsons pin, I have an actual plank of wood, right? I would say about maybe five inches below the top of the, of the back glass. And then I have the beacons and the, the toys, the figurines on it. And I was like, I can't do this for George. So I said, you know what? There's a couple of people I follow like on our, in, in Instagram, like with that build arcade, like overseas, like these UK people, Australian people, they're going crazy with these builds. One dude took an upright and where the kick plate is, like where the coin door would go, he just has like a whole diorama display. And I was like, oh shit, that looks gorgeous. Let me take the same concept and put it into George's pin. So that's honestly where the DMD idea came out. Um, again, on this guy, like a couple of people I follow on Instagram, that's like, I want to try that for the next one. Basically, it's just a clear kick plate with whatever figurines you want to put in it. Some even put like decorative, like they'll put their actual PC with like the tubes and all that. And I was like, let me try to translate that into the DMD. And I think I knocked it out of the park. I'm gonna give myself a, I'm gonna give myself like a pat on the back because I, I, you've never seen this. I'm calling it. You've never seen this on a pinball machine. I, I guarantee it. You've never seen it. So again, I, I, I've noticed that the best way to get big figurines, I'll give you my secret. You gotta look for piggy banks, like vinyl piggy banks. My Homer and Bart's, those are piggy banks. So I went quickly on eBay and I looked up piggy banks. And honestly, Disney stuff is in. Not only is it, it almost, it's not gonna, I'm gonna say it. It's almost impossible to find Disney stuff, but it's also impossible to find it at a reasonable price. Like some of the stuff is like collectible. I was on eBay and like somebody had a, a it was really cool. It was a taxi with like Donald and Goofy and Mickey and Minnie like hanging out on it. But it was like a $200 piggy bank. And I was like, I'm not, I don't think George is gonna be down for that. So finding affordable Disney stuff, I've learned it's, it's, takes a toll. Um, but again, first thing was that I looked up the actual piggy banks and then from there I took the height and everything. That's how I came up with the design of the DMD. I made windows, plexi windows with my CNC. I was able, actually able to make precision cut. It's amazing. I, I can't, I can't get enough of this. I have it illuminated. So I do have white lights to keep Mickey and Minnie on. I also found another little trick like my Homer and Bart, they're always on something clicked while I was doing the wiring. Basically now, whenever the strobe goes off, these lights will go off. So I figured that out. That was awesome. I also have um, beacon strobe lights on this and then the R channel and the B channel on this. So again, with that, I have the figurines here. The only downside was the beacon. Um, so luckily I do have the red and blue police flashers. Those I have hooked up to beacon channel. You don't really hear the motors. Like I'm so used to hearing the motor on my beacon, on my personal pin. That was like the only little thing I noticed, but at least we do have beacon features. Again, there's not actual beacons on this, um, but at least I was able to substitute the beacon with an LED flasher. So I'm dubbing this the limited edition. It is the limited edition. If you, again, I'm, I'm still building pins, but I've only built limited editions. Vic, what's in a limited edition build? That to me is considered almost all the toys. Strobes, 10 solenoids, surround sound feedback, beacons, the toys, LED underglow, that's it. The only thing that's missing out of what I said on this specific pin was the beacons and the shaker motor. Um, shaker motor, he's like Vic, it's, it, it, to me that it's cool. If you really dial it down, like I learned with Jared's, when I delivered that pin to Jared's house, we have the knob like almost at zero because it shakes the house. So shakers are cool. He didn't want it. And to substitute it though, I do have LED flipper buttons on this one, which is 
pretty cool. So to substitute, I guess, the beacon, count LED flipper buttons. So as you can see, I only did the main flippers. I didn't do magnet save. So I do have two ice LED flipper buttons with leaf switches. So all that is beautiful. It is definitely a very cool feature. It's, it's pretty nice. It's extra wiring because as you can see, the floor, the LED strip underneath is one color, but the flippers are another color. So in all honesty, I could hook the flippers up to the LED underglow, but giving it that two-tone color, it's, it's pretty cool. So honestly, if you think about it, as far as all the, I guess you could say, inners, I mean, again, 50 inch play field, 32 inch back glass. Again, the 50 inch play field is 4K display, 17 inch DMD. I got 10 solenoids on this. I do have surround sound force feedback. We have the strobes, the beacons substituted with the LED flashers, RGB flashers on it. Um, what else is this? Am I missing anything else? And the, I guess the LED flippers on it. Again, it is like all my limited edition builds minus actual physical beacon and shaker motor. So now in this world, and I, I'm still a firm believer that it's not going to go away soon. The PC on it. Let's talk about the computer itself in it. This is a PC build. I do have an MSI motherboard on this, an i5, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 uh, dedicated SSD just for the boot and the actual V pin stuff in it. And this is running a 1660 super. Um, again, PC world. I just upgraded my whole battle station and I got like a 3070 computer. I went all out because it's been like six years. I went all out with that build. Um, it's the, the, the computer side of things is not getting cheaper. Um, I'm always on sites looking for deals. This certain computer, I did find a great deal on it, to be honest. So again, I'm in New York. I'm going to say it. I'm lucky enough to have several micro centers within a radius by me. Uh, you got Westbury, you got Flushing, um, you got the Brooklyn one, and you got the Jersey one and Yonkers. I've never been to the Yonkers one. I have five micro centers by me, if you think about it. So I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm lucky on my location. So I have a couple of sites that I always look for deals. So one, one main website where I found Jared's, the Dell XPS build. And I'm just basically every like three days, I'll go on Micro Center just to look up deals for PCs. This right here was an MSI Codex build, um, refurbished. I'll be honest, it was refurbished. But then with that, you know, Micro Center still gives you their guarantees and all that. So this, I'll be honest, as far as PC wise alone, it came out to about 850. That was the deal, and then you gotta add the taxes and all that. Again, it's a 1660 Super, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 SSD, and an i5. So it was an actual desktop with a tower on it. I decased it, I'll open up the pin, and I'll show you the insides of it. But basically, that's the price range you get. And I needed a 1660 Super for 4K. Anytime you get 4K display, I always suggest a 1660 Super. That's like to me the minimum. Yes, you could do a 1650, whatever. I'm not gonna argue that. From my experience with Jared's build, the 1660 Super, it, it works with the three screens. So I kept it. What's cool about this certain build is that it is a real GTX 1660 Super. Not like Jared's build where it was like a Dell branded GTX. It still worked. There's some dude on YouTube that bad mouths it or whatever. It's a proprietary graphics card to Dell. This is a real one. It's an MSI branded 1660 Super on it. So now real quick, I'm going to tell you one thing I learned about this build and what I'm going to do for the future, right? This build, I used actual birch, real birch plywood from Home Depot. Um, had to do the normal stuff because birch is never perfectly smooth. Not to mention vinyl does not stick to birch wood. So I cut it, CNC cut perfectly, did a little bit of sanding for the edges. I basically bolted it all together. And then when it came time for like edges to clean up, I did have to wind up sanding, priming, sanding, priming. It was probably a good two to three days of just sanding and priming, sanding and priming to make sure everything was smooth. I did that for the entire cabinet sides. I didn't do it for the back because the back, nobody sees the back. You don't need artwork for the back. I'll show you the back. The back still has the actual birch to it. I even had to do it for the back box to make sure the vinyl stuck and everything. 
took my T molding cut. I did basically the T molding cut only for the back box. Basically, what I'm getting at is the birch is it's good. It's more work compared to Jared Simpson's pin, where I have. Let me see if I have a sample of it. Um, I do. Whereas Jared's pen, I use this, which is birch laminated, pre-laminated. Perfectly smooth, no need to sand, no need to do anything with it. This was ready to go set. Again, I used this wood on Jared's pen where I had a carpenter cut it. I found out where this wood comes from and I got it. The only issue is, is that this costs double of one sheet of birch plywood wood at Home Depot. Wood, 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 wood. Um, so keep that in mind. Birch plywood at Home Depot after tax, you're probably paying about 60 bucks. This one after tax, you're at about 110. For a V-pen like this, I needed two sheets of four by eight. So you could do the math. Basically, I saved 100 bucks. But then I bought a hundred bucks worth of material such as sandings and, and the, the, the paint and the primer. And I'm going to count in that hundred bucks. I had to do more work and it took more time. So in all my future builds, I'm just going to use this. I'm going right to this. It's a little bit more expensive for white. Black is like the hundred and ten dollar price range. Whereas white, it's about, I think a hundred and, and I don't know, 25. It's like a $15 difference, but all my future builds, I'm, I'm sticking with this, this laminate. It's just going to save me so much time. It's going to be so much cleaner. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to do that. So now also I'll show you real quick the back box on this because you might've noticed like the DMD, there's no speaker grills like my other builds. So I basically decased the Logitech speakers and I have them pointed up vertically. They are still loud. So you could definitely still hear them. And basically with this kind of setup, it's an open back. I just have a piece of wood going here just to block out, give a background really for Mickey and Minnie. Um, another note, like I said, uh, with that wood that I'm gonna be using for now on, you know, with the back box, I had to paint and I should say prime and then uh, prime sand, prime sand. And when I primed it, it was white. I could have done black, but it was white. And I was like, this looks kind of weird that it's like a black, uh, uh, it's an all blue artwork and then black cabinet inside so i went and i'm not going to do this anymore but i went on ebay and i got like this starry night vinyl i'm going to stop doing it it's got to be real 3m vinyl this vinyl from like ebay isn't cheap either uh, i bought like three rolls really to fit uh it was one two and then for here was three rolls i needed um I, it was like a 12 by 36 or something like that and you know, for the price I paid, it didn't it didn't stick well. And I, at first I thought it was like, you know, maybe I didn't prime it enough. And honestly, it's just, it's like whatever glue the company uses for this, it's it's not good. You can see the back here, you can see the bubble. Um, I really did it that way because I wanted definitely the inside. When you look in front, you know, I wanted like the sidewalls to be nice. I wanted it to match the artwork on the outside. So I didn't really want to just leave it black, but you know, now with the other style of wood I was showing you before, I'm hoping, well, I'm, I'm gonna say now, I'm gonna have to get real 3M, you know, 3M vinyl for the inside, unless you, I keep it black or white. Um, I definitely know it's not my wood and my priming because the artwork, which was supplied by Gulf Coast decals, um, again, I supplied the artwork, they print it. This is like, there's no bubbling, there's nothing at all. It's just this kind of eBay vinyl, which I use as like car vinyl. I'm done with it. I'm, I'm not using it anymore. Um, but while we're here, we can look at the back box. You can see uh, my other builds, I did one solid kind of two by eight. Not a two by eight. Yeah, a two by eight. A two by eight piece of wood down the middle to hold the DMD and the back glass. But as you can see, I did it kind of double. And I'm gonna take you closer because a lot of people are gonna wanna know about the DMD design. Um, but there you guys have it. you can at least see the back box and you can see right here I know the camera gonna drop it, but you can see I didn't paint this. There was no need to paint this Honestly, it just would have been more time-consuming. Nobody sees the back I always have the LED strip here because it's gonna go against the wall and I put the LED strip, LED strip here vertically Because again, he's got a slanted roof. It'll illuminate the roof and all that. So there's a little kind of look at the back box so just to show you real quick the back end here, how my CNC machine basically cut this out. 
basically you could see it's a three quarter inch piece of birch and then the DMD machine cut out a groove for me to cleanly put the plexi in. The, the DMD screen, I'm gonna talk about it. A little bit of a challenge, especially when it came to the CNC machine, but you kind of see like the indented groove that's holding it in. Same thing on mini side here. And I'm gonna talk about the monitors. If you notice, this is a replacement laptop 17 inch screen I used for the DMD. So kind of like arcade one-up mods, you do need like this LCD board con converter thing. So yes, that is a laptop screen. You can see the wiring here. Pretty cool stuff. You guys kind of saw a sneak peek of the back here. I really did it, I mean, perfectly, not to my own horn, but like anywhere you stand, you really don't see the wiring unless you're really on the side of it. But you could just see, again, with like mini, you could see like the nice little sparkle on the end of it. Another thing I should have done, I should have painted this black, shot it black. Now I know for the future, but it's not that big of a deal. Same thing if we go to Mickey's side here. Again, how to hide the wiring. That's just how great it is. Cause no matter, you know, wherever you're standing on it, you don't want to see a mess of wires, but you could see again, mini Mickey, I should say. And then you see, I put the black piece of wood in the back. So it's got just a, basically a dark background. So now a quick thing about monitors, because I get this question a lot. Again, I read all the comments you guys put on YouTube. I always answer them. Um, cool story, funny story, and then partially sad story. Um, the big thing about the back, the back glass. So I always use this ViewSonic. ViewSonic 32 inch, I always use it because it's like, it's, it's almost frameless. It does have a nice silver on the bottom to kind of separate the screens, like you've seen in my other builds. But the biggest thing is that it's just, it's just frameless, it's edge to edge. Whereas instead of doing, if you did the other route of getting like a 32 inch TV, now you gotta get a piece of plexi and you gotta paint the edges to hide the bezels of the TV. Yes, there are other frameless ones, but again, I really like this ViewSonic. That's, it's, it's been great for all my builds. Yes, you do pay, a, it's, I think it's like what, 290 bucks? Um, but I, I never will go against it. I do have the stickers on this for now. When I deliver, I always take this sticker off and there's a sticker on the top right corner that's just like seal of approval, tested, all done. Um, let me talk about the DMD, because the DMD, a lot of people are gonna be like, whoa, 17 inch, did you use a laptop screen? Yes, this is actually a replacement laptop screen. I think it was for like a Lenovo, it doesn't matter. But as you can see, I have all the wiring and stuff, it's got the LCD board. I was hesitant about using this 17 inch screen, um, really hesitant about using a laptop screen, but I'll be honest, it worked. And not to mention, it's just like a regular, you know, monitor where once you give it power, it turns on and it says no signal if there's no signal to it. So definitely, definitely dig in this. I, I, I would probably, I would probably use this again. Only toughest challenge was it's just so thin. It is like, I would say it's like an eighth of an inch thin. So mounting it is going to be a little bit of a tricky thing. That's where the CNC came in. I have a piece of wood basically trimmed around it. It's holding it in. Also, the vinyl here honestly is holding it in too as well. Not much, but at least the CNC machine knocked that out. Um, hard thing about this, I got it. it. I got it on Amazon, so it came in after two days. The first one I got, it didn't power on. I actually saw a spark like in the wire. Uh, for the LCD board. I messaged the company and they're like, listen, we'll overnight it, but it's, you're gonna pay an extra 30 bucks. And I was like, no, I could wait. Um, it took about a week to get that. Um, the only positive, I mean, again, that it kind of, I lost time, meaning I lost a week waiting for this. But with the broken screen, I was able to make DMDs and get it perfectly. So it was a plus and a minus. The Samsung TV, it's a funny story. I bought this purposely on Black Friday to save George money, right? So this this right here again, same thing. It's a Samsung 7 Series TU 7000 50 inch 4K, right? I got it on Black Friday. I always have it just chilling here because the last thing I ultimately put in on this, I always put the monitor last, like the TV last. That's like, okay, all the PC, all the wiring is good. I use a laptop to test it off. Once everything's good, I then take the TV out of the box. Uh, I got it from like BJ's. BJ's has like a, you have set, uh, you have 14 days until you could return it. So again, I bought this on Black Friday. 
right? You would figure you got a sale on it Black Friday, right? So took it out of the box, I put it on, I put it in, it, it fit perfectly. I turn it on and all of a sudden there's like on the four corners and in the middle here was like, like lines. And then not to mention it looked like, like as if somebody's like wrist was pushed into it. And I'm like, what the hell? Sure enough, it was a it was a bad TV, and I returned it back to BJ's with like three days left. Now here's the funny story, right? I returned this. I bought this TV for I believe it was four four forty nine, Black Friday price, right? I go to BJ's. The girl was like, "Oh, you're in luck. This TV's on sale for three forty nine." And I was like, "I thought Black Friday sales was we said." She's like, "Well, apparently we didn't sell enough TVs, so they lowered the price even more." So. This whole Black Friday thing is all BS now. So I guess I, I saved George a hundred bucks by going back and returning in that. The only thing I did notice is that it looks like, it seems like it's a new, maybe it's a year older, it's a different version. It's a little bit of an upgraded Samsung. Um, reason I say that is because when I turn the switch on, on my builds, on Jared's builds, all the Samsungs I've done, TV boots on, everything boots on fairly quick. This one though, and I'm gonna make a note to George that when you do flip the switch, you have to wait for the TV to go into like no signal mode. So when you do turn on the switch, it'll give you the Samsung logo. So the TV automatically turns on, that's why I like Samsungs. TV automatically turns on, and then I guess for like a, a second it actually turns off. Then it comes back on, gives you a spinning wheel, and then it says no signal. What I discovered and how I discovered it, I would flip the switch and then I would put the PC on within five seconds. And for some reason, the PC kept changing displays. And then I was like, you know what? Let me put the switch on and then wait like a minute, not a minute, but like 30 seconds until I saw the no signal. All of a sudden, it stopped switching displays. So basically, same Samsung, it's a great 4K TV. It's just, I'm telling George, flip the switch, give it, 30 seconds until you save the, 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 the actual big picture that says no signal detected, then put the PC on. You should have seen it for two days. I'm like, why is my PC, this was screen one, and then this was screen one, and then this. I was like, what the hell is going on? But I finally figured it out, luckily. So that's kind of a new thing about the Samsungs is that I guess it turns on, then turns off for a second. I don't know, I don't work for Samsung, but that was one thing I didn't notice about that and a funny story about all the monitors. One last comment, and then I'm just gonna probably go into gameplay so you guys can see it and hear it and all that. I get this comment a lot, and people go, "Did you really go to like Home Depot and get um, these like uh, angled tubings?" And I'm like, "It's a hardware store. I get them from, but it's not Home Depot." Uh, I'm gonna show you because Home Depot does sell something similar, but it is not chrome finish. Number one, it's not this clean of a chrome, and number two. I'm talking to a guy overseas that he makes custom side rails and lockdown bars. Um, the reason why I use this, this is an inch and a quarter. The birch wood is three quarters. And again, the TVs, you know, if you ever have to swap out the TV, you have to give a little bit of space. So it's not like perfectly, you know, an eighth of an inch off. I'm probably off about, I would say a quarter of an inch. So. You know, three quarters, then you want to cover the TV bezel. So this is an inch and a quarter, an inch and a quarter. So a lot of people are like, oh, you use Home Depot stuff, it looks cheap. That's what it is. Until I can get a custom person to make an inch and a quarter side rail, real pinball side rails are three quarters. So you're going to see the TV bezel, you're going to see a gap. That's why I use these. Um, you can't just cut these. You actually you have to use a grinder, polish out the edges. But I, I'm still, I have the barcode on these. Home Depot at this size, the thickness on it is like bigger than an eighth. But as you can see here, like that's not thick. That's an eighth. So it doesn't come out, it doesn't protrude much. Not to mention again, it does have the pre-drilled holes and again, it is chrome finished. So you can see it's, it's, it shines, it's, it's got the mirror finish to it, look at it. That's not, Home Depot, won't, you won't get that at Home Depot. So luckily by me, there's a hardware store. Um, I believe they're like $45 for six feet and I need three rails to do it. So you do the math on that. Um, 
But yeah, I always get that comment a lot. Vic, it looks like it's jagged edge. It looks like it's sharp. No, I, I purposely grind down the corners so you can't cut your hand. It feels comfortable. That's what I do. Adding a lockdown bar is cool, but you're gonna the, the cabinet's gotta go longer. And again, I use 50 inch TVs. Yes, you could do a 43 inch, and yes, you'll have room for a lockdown bar, and yes, 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 yes. I know, I know, but a lot of people look at the 50 inch like, whoa. Again, this right here is the size of a standard wide body. I think it's a Bally's or a Williams wide body cabinet. So my dimensions are exactly, you could Google it. That's what the dimensions are of this. The only difference is the width. The width is 25, almost 26 inches wide. Whereas a standard is about, I think it's like 21. So that's the only thing that's different is my width. But other than that, let's do some gameplay real quick. You'll hear the solenoids and everything. Same thing with this, and like I do my other builds, I added the LED Wiz off, so the solenoids won't go off. You can see the LEDs went out. On and off switch, it's a beautiful feature. I have to add that still to my personal pin, because I play it like late night, so it's definitely a cool feature to have. All right, so for now, I'm gonna just do it with the lights on so you can kind of see it. Basically, it's in track mode, so I wake up a track mode, I could exit out. I always tell everyone, for me, my pins, the main thing really is VPX, FX3, and FX2. Zachariah and Future Pinball, I'm not a fan of. Zachariah tables are just not my thing. Future Pinball, besides Terry Red stuff, it's, it's, I don't like Future Pinball. The physics on it, I'm not really a fan of. So we'll do some visual pinball. I'm trying to think of most recent tables that I downloaded. Um, I think I was playing Spider-Man actually. And Big Us made a new uh, Jurassic Park, Guardians. I'll do the Spider-Man real quick. I do want to do different tables that people haven't seen. Um, you know, I always do Simpsons. I always do the Forbidden Table, but I figure let's take a look at some different style tables. One table that I've recently been playing because somebody posted on Facebook, and I'll play it here, is um, uh, World Cup Soccer. That's like an amazing, amazing thing. So. This again, this right now is um, the Vault Edition Spider-Man. Very HD, 4K, redone, whoever did it. Again, with my build, I always do have pinball now. So holding the extra ball, left and right. And again, my pinball, my pinball controls, it's global. I have it set to global, so the overall sound and the um, surround sound feedback. So playing at level one, it's low. Going in the middle, you'll hear the ball roll and you'll feel it and all that. So I'm gonna bump up a little. Again, solenoid. Let me lower it. So you can hear the solenoids going off. Again, 10 solenoids. Analog nudge, obviously. So now a table like this, it doesn't have all the surround sound feedback. I do have the flippers, I could hear it but not really the ball roll. So again, certain tables, most tables, I think it's like a handful that don't really have surround sound feedback set up, but definitely when you bump with the volume, you can hear it. Analog plunger. Again, speakers on this, Dayton Audios, there's four exciters, and I always use the Z533 Logitech with the subwoofer cut out, so I decase the sub. I'll turn off the lights. You guys a little closer again. 
It's just pinball is a different game. It's not an arcade game. Like, again, like I said in my past videos, like right now I just got into World Cup soccer. So that's gonna be a table that like I would stay on that for a month just to learn it. So as you can see real quick, can you see the ball? Let me see. So when I nudge the table, you can see the ball physics on it. That's what's great about the KLZ board. I got the volume low on it. I'm gonna load up the Simpsons just so you could hear. Look at how like this table transforms. It's a beautiful table. So just real quick, as you can see, you could adjust sensitivity on it. I like this sensitivity because I'm not used to shaking the table because I'm just like afraid. It's just a, a personal thing. You don't have you could you could shake the hell out of this, but you could adjust sensitivity on this. So right now that sound would really be a shaker motor going off. So that right now is the same smart board going crazy if there was a shaker motor connected. We got multiple going on. Did I lock the ball? I lost the ball, but I lost the ball. There's a lot going on. So as you can see, 4K display, 60 hertz on this TV. You can see there's, there's no bowl lag, it's, it's beautiful. I've yet to try 144 hertz. I'm dying to try that, honestly. So now real quick, I don't want to always show The Simpsons, but I just, I know for a fact The Simpsons, the um, surround sound is there. So let's launch it real quick. And then I'll also be able to show you the Mickey and Minnie, the flashers, the strobes, and all that. So only big thing I do know is that I'm gonna I'm gonna open up the table to show you guys, but I have to basically lower um, the Z31 uh, Z533 knob because it's a little bit too loud. Again, I have it right now set to one, and I really shouldn't hear any sound, but that's just the knob I have it I have it too loud. Um, so I'm gonna bump up the volume. I'm gonna try to show this, the, the ball roll really for you to hear it. You might not hear it totally, um, but I'll come back and I'll relaunch the table after I adjust the, um, the Z533 knob, but for now. See, like even now you might be able to hear. Oh, you know what I could do real quick? Okay, cool. Actually, I did it better. I just real quick lowered the table volume on it. So I'm going to bump up the volume and you'll hear. See, if you could hear, that's the coin drop. And not to mention again, with surround sound, it adds more realism to the flippers. So again, I have 10 solenoids. But you can see that's a solenoid and surround sound feedback combo. You can hear the ball, see? So again, surround sound feedback, definitely. And again, not to mention I feel the rumble. You can't see it obviously, but I feel the rumble while it rolls down. It's just, it's, it's an amazing feature. Again, I, I always suggest that it's, it's really a must. It's a big add-on must. I'm gonna let this ball drain. And again, you could hear like it's going through stuff and it just sounds so real. Again, same thing with the nudge. As you can see, I'm able to shake it. Somebody asked me like, can you do the, the, the ball pass? I'm not that good at it, but let me see if I could try to get it. I had one guy like come, he was like, I'm looking for a V pin, but I want to test one out. And he actually went and did like this bowl pass. 
wasn't that. <laughs> it's supposed to be like a double tap real quick. Like that. See, like that's what that's what you want to aim for. So if you wanted to pass the pinball to this side. I'm not a pro, but you get what I mean. <laughs> so yes, surround sound feedback is just a great feature. I'm just gonna bring you guys up real quick to show you the back box. So you're gonna see when strobes go off. I have this channel set to normally closed right now, whereas all the other toys are set to normally open. And basically you'll see it'll tap. You'll also see if you look carefully, red and blue. I'm gonna try to get the beacon to go off. Let's do one thing at a time. I right, lost the ball. <laughs> Again, I'll bring it down. You don't need to see the back glass. Again, it's just awesome. I get that. I get this question a lot. How realistic does it look? Again, 4K display. This Simpsons table was redone by Big Oss. Big Gus, Big Oss. I, I call him Big Oss. <laughs> so again, I don't know if you saw that, but like by mini, here's a strobe. You can see the strobe? See the blue and red flash? That's the strobe. Uh, that's the beacon. I'm sorry. That's the beacon. You just saw the strobe go off. So blue and red flash was beacon. So in reality, my beacon, you would actually hear the motors spin, but on this specific pin, the beacons are basically LEDs. Try to get the strobe one more time. Oh, lost the ball. One last ball, here we go. I should be a pro at this table because I play this table a lot. <laughs> I'm trying to get the garage. Multi ball, possibly. There it goes. Let's see. Obviously, strobes didn't go off on that. There you go. So you kind of just got a hint of the strobe real quick. You could see again red flashers over mini. I got green flash over Mickey. There's the strobe. So again, it's definitely cool. It's just, it's just awesome now. Instead of the lights always being on, they go according to DOF. It's, it's just awesome. So now real quick, you see, using the keyboard inputs, that's actually like how you would actually raise the volume really in the Simpsons table. So I never go to full blast or else it just sounds distorted. Uh, I'll do one more quick ball. So you guys can see again, you can see the strobes, and see you get the underglow. Yeah. And again, LED flippers, it's just, it's just awesome. Uh, great. <laughs> the LED flippers are definitely something cool. And as you see, Dofflink sets it up. There's always two different colors. Um, if you want to do the easier way is you could, there's again, you can see the red flash going off. The easier way is to just kind of connect these to the underbody glow um but Dofflink does have a separate input for flippers so it's definitely awesome and cool one more time you'll see on the floor that's like strobes and red going off it's cool let's go next i'm gonna do it real quick let's play some roller coaster tycoon again i'm trying to play tables that aren't too repetitive. Every time I do a table, every time I do a new pin, I like to show it off. So we'll do World Cup. Pump with the volume a little. So now like I said, when I open up the table, I'll fix it. Even when I get to his house, um, I just have to fix the knob. It's something big. As you can see, we're at 12% and it's kind of loud. This is a beautiful pin. This is this table is beautiful. It's it's amazing. It's so high depth. Skill shots. There's a goal. This is definitely a table for like the kids. It's amazing. So, oh, I didn't get it yet. Oh, there you go. 
That's so cool. <laughs> Here's the ball. And this table does have surround sound feedback. I can hear the ball moving. I can feel it too. Cool. I gotta shoot a ramp. No! Damn! <laughs> I always get scared. Like, I don't know. It's just me personally, like, to shake it. <laughs> And the soccer ball is a magnet, so you can see that it pulls it in. Well, that's another goal right there. This is like a fun table. This is just very easy to play. It's definitely a cool table. This is cool. So the ball is here. I gotta hit it. Oh, there you go, yes. <laughs> it's just, it's so cool. It's, it's a lot of fun. I went away and walked away. It's, it's awesome, definitely a thing of beauty. That's, that's definitely gonna be like a table to play. Again, usually like on Jared's pin and my other pins, 50% on pin ball is like, I have it usually set to a little bit above like high. Like, you know, 100 should be full blast. I just have to fix the knob on that. It's not a big deal. Um, I do want to just make one quick point, uh, and that is with FX3. So FX3, I updated my stuff so that um, it works with Dofflinks. It's always worked with Dofflinks, but I never had the full DMD work. So the note I want to make about, and this is like every build, even on my personal, my personal pin, it takes a second and I'll put a, I'll throw a timer on right now. You can see right now the table loaded. I don't have back glass and I don't have full DMD, but after about like 30 to 45 seconds, you're going to see everything kick on. Dofflinks, underglow, the flippers, the back glass, there you go. That's just a thing that Dofflinks does. It's, it's, it's going off my red flasher. So basically now, I could play it and my solenoids work. So it's just something that I noticed. See like I, for this specific one, I have to drop down the DMD a little bit. This is really an FX2 table. But like that's the only thing I noticed. But as you can see, Everything with Dofflinks is working within FX2 and FX3. It's just it takes that second, not a second, but as you can see, it takes about 30 seconds for it. I think you guys let me know in the chat. Let me know if that's like a standard thing that you guys witness. I know for a fact my pin does that. Jared's pin does that. It's, it's just that's, that's what it is. I, I don't know what else. Another slight thing is that sometimes when I exit, I lose the play field on pinup. But then if I press exit again, it comes back. So that's like the only thing I've noticed. But other than that, this is just a beautiful pin. There's nothing you can say about it. Now real quick, some people might go, Vic, there's no Mickey and Minnie tables. Future Pinball is full of, I call them user created tables. I don't really look at this at all, but I did find like the Minions table because he's got kids. So they're going to probably play it. There is like, for example, a Mickey and Pluto table. I'll launch it just for kicks. But it's, it's, this is like a table that a kid's gonna play it. It's basically meant to like, just go and, and hit the, the ball around, it's, you know, have fun, go. So as you can see, basic table, I can, It's just like a, it's a basic table. It's cool, it's cute, the kids will love it. It's definitely, it's definitely a cool thing. It's just like, 
Even like this, you can see the bowl is like floating. Could be a future pinball setting, but the, the bowl is just like floating. It's to me, VPX visual pinball is, I just, I just like it way more than anything else. It's cool. I mean, it's cute. There's your Mickey Disney table on that. So like real quick, I'll load up like the Minions table. I know the Minions are on Disney, but just to show you like kids tables and all that. I'm gonna show you real quick. I'm gonna probably mute this part of the video because I don't wanna get hit with copyright, but it has music. I think it should be okay, it's kind of a random song. But as you can see, like, this is a table that you just kinda, you just kinda hit the ball around. It's cool for the kids, it's a beautiful looking table. Not really objective based stuff. All right guys, so real quick, I'll take you guys into the cabinet. Uh, I took the side rails off, I took the plexi off. I do have plexi on this one, so plexi glass comes right off. Some people like to see how to take the TV out. You gotta be very careful, obviously there's a TV, it's a Samsung TV. Usually I try to not go right on the edge. But basically I'm gonna push down and with my right hand I lift up and the TV just comes out just like that. And then I hook to the left and rest. So now the Samsung logo is down to me. Um, so before I started filming, I actually went and I fixed the volume. So I have right now the volume all the way down to one. And you could faintly hear it. So when I shot the beginning of this video, you could hear the volume. This now is like really the way I test it. I should have done it before I shot the video, but now I did all the audio. I also fixed my surround sound so it wasn't too loud and all that. So this is probably the best way to do this, to have an actual table on and then 100%. That's like the loudest somebody would want. As far as like in, in a home, you could go louder, but usually again, when I'm at the customer's house, we'll actually do a sound test and then they'll tell me, Vic, keep it low, keep it down. But at least that's a good point because halfway, like this to me is like, I could play this easily. Surround sound is loud enough and all that, so there's a lot of like minor tweaking to do, but now this is set, good to go. Um, I'll take you guys closer and you'll see the inside of the cabinet. 